Hello, welcome to this video about mitral valve repair using the robot in a minimally invasive manner from the Mayo Clinic. I'm Rocky Daly and I'm a cardiac surgeon at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, to begin with, we disclose our uh, activities. I am uh, involved with as an inventor in a couple of projects uh, for mitral valve repair, but these have nothing to do with the robot uh, and are currently under investigation. With the robot, we're repairing mitral valve regurgitation, which is related to leaflet prolapse. There are different causes of mitral regurgitation, but what we'll be talking about today is leaflet prolapse or uh, degenerative mitral valve disease. This is a three-dimensional echo which shows the bottom, the bottom part of the valve right here uh, with ruptured cordy tendony and prolapse of this portion of the valve. Even if patients don't have symptoms, they can have excess mortality over time when they have this disease process and they have severe mitral regurgitation. This shows survival of patients that have mitral regurgitation due to leaflet prolapse compared to a normal population and you can see that it's, there is an excess mortality. If patients develop symptoms, even if they have normal cardiac function, they can have an excess mortality compared to what's expected. But if we intervene and fix the valve uh, before the symptoms are severe, and while the heart is still functioning well, the patients will have a normal survival compared to the rest of the population. So the disease process is essentially suppressed. There is enough information about repair of mitral regurgitation now for there to be guidelines which have been developed by the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association for indications for surgery. Uh, and this includes indications for even patients that have not yet developed symptoms. Mayo Clinic has really a vast experience with mitral valve repair. This is the number of mitral valve repairs per year going back several decades. And you can see uh, there are over 8,000 mitral valve repairs now at the Mayo Clinic. Now we have the robot which allows with this technology allows us to do the procedure in a minimally invasive way and still preserve the same techniques that we have used over decades. Our experience with mitral valve repair at the Mayo Clinic is here. It began in 2008 and uh, we had a lower number as we changed surgeons occasionally but uh, we are over 100 cases per year now, and we have considerable experience. We have experience with over 700 cases. This is the incision for a standard uh, repair of the mitral valve in a conventional manner. It's a median sternotomy, and uh, this is uh, really very good for surgery. It, uh, it uh, has been the standard for, for decades. Uh, sometimes we can do the surgery through a small thoracotomy on the side, but with the robot we can manage it through several very small incisions. Uh, here is the working port here, and you can tell that we have reached a, a point of very small incisions now thanks to the technology. The thing we do want to do is maintain very good outcomes, and that means that we need to select patients properly. So, no, some patients are not a good candidate for this. We we want to avoid shortcuts, we use the very same technique that we use with a standard conventional open surgery, uh, and we monitor and control uh, what's our outcomes. All patients get a CT angiogram in advance to make sure that uh, they can have femoral cannulation for cardiopulmonary bypass and that it will be safe to go ahead with the robot approach. There are three of us at Mayo Clinic that are involved with these operations, with the robot operations. Myself, Rocky Daly, uh, and my colleagues, Dr. Joe Duraney and Dr. Simon Malte. At every surgery at Mayo Clinic, we have two of us scrubbed uh, and involved with each surgery. Uh, and so what we have is uh, one surgeon, in this case, this is me at the bedside working on, with the patient, and uh, Dr. Duraney, who is at the remote console for the control for the robot arms. Uh, 
we're very interchangeable uh, and uh, this is prior to the surgery now and we are evaluating the echo with our colleagues from cardiology. This shows a leaflet prolapse in a two-dimensional echo and here's the leaflet that's abnormal. You see it's coming up too high above the anterior leaflet which is at a normal level and that results in this regurgitant jet of mitral insufficiency that's eccentric and directed along the colors that you see here. Our incision for the uh, uh, robotic approach is uh, just big enough so that we can see and, and work. And then we make several small incisions for the robot arms uh, as well as for a cannula and for a retractor. As I mentioned, one surgeon works at the robot remote console and as the surgeon moves hands underneath these, you can see here, those movements of the hands and fingers are very precisely transferred to the robot arms inside the chest of the patient. Here's my colleague, Dr. Malte, and he's at the bedside next to the patient and you'll see the robot arms moving uh, as the surgeon sitting at the console moves the the controls which we just showed. You see the arms moving. Dr. Multe can see up on this screen uh, the robot arms moving as well. Our technique for mitral valve repair is very standardized. We do the same technique that we use with a standard conventional open surgery. This shows posterior leaflet prolapse with a flail segment and on the posterior leaflet we can excise this flail segment which is shown here. It's a triangular type of excision. And then the leaflet is reconstructed with running monofilament suture. And all of the, uh, leaf, all of the repairs are supported with what's called an annuloplasty. This is a band uh, which is used to support the annuloplasty. And the band just spreads out tension on the sutures and brings the leaflets closer together so that they co-apt for a deeper distance and have better support. This is post-operatively. We're looking at the echo with our colleagues now and uh, studying to make sure that we have a good repair. A close-up of the repair is shown here. You see that the leaflets no longer have one of the leaflets riding up in the air. And if we look at the color, there's no color going backwards uh, from the valve. So this is a a nice repair. I mentioned that we have to be careful about patient selection and there are some contraindications to using a minimally invasive robot approach. Uh, if the patient needs other surgical procedures on the heart, uh, except for a few exceptions such as closure of a patent frame in ovale, sometimes we can do tricuspid valve repair at the same time or a maze procedure. But other surgical procedures on the heart would require an open procedure. If the patient's had previous cardiac surgery or right thoracic surgery, then it's not possible to approach with a robot. They do need to have competent aortic valves. Mild aortic regurgitation or enlargement of the ascending aorta can create difficulties during a robot approach. We need to support the patient on uh, their single lung before and after cardiopulmonary bypass, and uh, so they need to have uh, a minimal amount of lung disease. We do cannulate the femoral vessels and as I mentioned, we do a CT scan to make sure that's safe, but uh, uh, if there are any concerns, then we should not use this approach. Extreme obesity it can be a, uh, a complicating factor with these minimally invasive approaches uh, and we make this decision on an individual basis. Severe left ventricular dysfunction uh, can be a problem in terms of being able to provide good protection to the heart and we may find that some of these are not are best not done minimally invasively. And scoliosis uh, can bring the ribs together in a way that may make it not possible to approach the right side. Depending on the position of breast implants that can be an issue uh, for the right surgery, right-sided chest surgery. And mitral annular calcification, pulmonary hypertension, or liver dysfunction 
are relative uh, contraindications. Decisions are made on an individual basis. We have experience, as I mentioned, with over 700 robot-assisted mitral valve repairs now at Mayo Clinic. We've had a 100% repair rate with these. We've had no conversions to a sternotomy. There have been uh, very few major complications, less than 1%. The, with the robotic approach, we've had shorter ventilation. The patients are almost all extubated in the operating room, and we target a hospital stay of just three days. At the time of hospital discharge, all of the patients have had mild or less mitral regurgitation. Durability of the repairs has been uh, studied, and this is durability out to 10 years and need for mitral reoperation. Uh, this is need for reoperation with anterior leaflet repair, with bi leaflet repair, and with a poster leaflet repair. And you can see with poster leaflet repair, which is most common, the need for reoperation is exceptionally small. In fact, it's actually less than the need for reoperation for mechanical uh, valves, which are felt to be permanent. We've done some other operations, as I mentioned, with the robot. We've had uh, patent frame and ovale closure in 15% of our patients. We've done left-sided maze procedure in 55 patients. Tricuspid valve repair, either, either as an isolated procedure or combined with mitral valve repair in 10. Uh, in 10 patients, we've done tumor resections. Uh, these are isolated tumors. And uh, ASD closure in six and an Amplatz device removal in one patient. One of the benefits of robotic approach or minimally invasive approach is the recovery time. Uh, this shows return to work with the robotic approach compared to return to work with an open uh, mitral valve repair. Uh, and the percentage of patients at three months that have gone back to work uh, is higher with the robotic approach. So the outcomes have been similar to an open repair. This has been a safe and efficacious way of fixing the mitral valve. We do use the same technique that we would use in an open repair, so we understand very well the durability. The bypass and cross clamp times are similar to open repair. Uh, length of stay is reduced. We do target about three days in the hospital. And cost uh, has been similar uh, or reduced due to the lower hospital length of stay. So in conjunction with my colleagues, I want to say thank you for taking the time to view this video.